Hello YouTube, Brett McKay here from The Art of Manliness, back with a quick video because I wanted to answer a question that I've been getting asked over and over again every time I post a video of myself deadlifting on Instagram. So, backstory, I continued my barbell training that I started with Mark Ripito back in 2015 when I did those videos on uh, just the basic barbell lifts. Uh, since then, I started working with a starting strength coach. His name is Matt Reynolds. He's the owner of Starting Strength Online Coaching, as well as the owner of the Barbell Logic YouTube channel. And with his help, I've made some great progress, made some great PRs. Just did a 315 bench PR that I've been working on since I was 17 years old, a high school football player, uh, 215 pound press PR, which is uh, my body weight. And then a big one uh, last month or two months ago in November, a 605 pound deadlift PR. So whenever I post a video of myself deadlifting on Instagram, because I do that occasionally, uh, I always get asked the same question. Brett, why are your feet so close together? Brett, why are your feet so close together? Brett, what's going on with the feet? Brett, why is your back rounded? Brett, that's not how Mark Ripito taught you how to deadlift, and it's correct. That's not how Mark Ripito taught me to, how to deadlift. But about a year and a half of my working with Matt, Matt made some adjustments to my form where we brought my feet close in together, told me to shove my knees out. We're actually rounding my upper back, um, and we've done this for a reason. And so to explain why I deadlift the way I do, I came up to Springfield to my coach's house where his home gym, here we are, it's very nice, to ask him why I deadlift the way I do. So Matt, why are my feet so close together? <laughs> well, some things have changed with you in the last few years. Uh, first, those of you guys that remember the video that you guys did, or the videos that you did with Mark Ripito, you didn't look like the same guy. No. Right, so you've gained about what forty pounds of weight. Right, you've lost a couple inches off your waist in the same Two process. Inches. That's and, hard to do. And I'm a lot grayer. And you're a lot grayer. Yeah, more wise. More, more, it's it's I'm the silver fox. That's right. Yeah. So I love the way starting strength teaches a deadlift, and I'm a starting strength coach. I teach the deadlift the exact same way that Mark Ripito taught you how to do it in that deadlift video on the Art of Manliness deadlift video. It's a simple five step process, but here's what's changed. Starting strength tries to get normal people generally strong. So if you start weak and we try to get you generally strong, the criteria they use to do that when they pick the lifts and how to teach the lifts is that first we use lifts that use the most muscle mass. Two, we use the most weight possible. And then three, and this is the one that's gonna matter for today, they utilize those lifts or they perform those lifts over the greatest effective range of motion. So I actually wanna move the bar as far as I can because that makes me the most generally strong. Right. Now, when you came to me, you had about a 400 pound deadlift, 405, somewhere in that yeah. ballpark. And so you were getting to the point where you were generally strong. Then you chose to do a competition. You chose to start competing in strength lifting or powerlifting type meets. And so that changes something because now you're not doing a deadlift or the lifts in general for general strength. You're doing it for competitive strength. And competitive strength is a little bit different. And so as we took your deadlift from a general deadlift to a competitive deadlift, the thing that changes is that effective range of motion. So now what I wanna do is I actually still obviously wanna lift the most weight. That's the goal of the competition. The muscle mass still matters because more muscle mass will be able to use the most, move the most weight. But the big thing is, is I actually wanna actively reduce range of motion as much as I can within the laws of the competition, right? So you were competing in US strength lifting. Strength lifting doesn't allow a sumo deadlift. They only allow conventional deadlift. So the question is, how can we change your deadlift with your hands outside your legs in order to shorten the range of motion and reduce the amount of moment force or torque or rotational force on your body in a deadlift? Because that's really what you're, what you're doing, right? You're bent over on a deadlift and you're trying to stand up and get straight. So you're fighting this force that's trying to fold you in half. And so here's what we did. All right, so Matt, let's talk about how I was deadlifting before and how you coached me before on the deadlift because it was exactly the same as how Ripito taught me how to deadlift on those videos. It's a simple five-step process. So let's walk through that five-step sure. process and then we'll show the changes that we made from that, right? Gotcha. Because really that's the foundation of what we're doing. So first off, the stance on this, it's before the five-step process, is a little bit wider. So it's, it's about vertical jump stance. Yeah. So it's gonna put your feet basically underneath your hips, okay? Step one, walk forward until you're one inch from the bar. And from this point, you're not gonna move and the bar is not gonna move. Right. Like you can't take a step. 
Step two, with straight legs, bend over and grab the bar. Step three, shins to the bar, knees out. Step four, with hips high, squeeze your chest up and make your back flat. You'll see the shirt wrinkle okay. here, ready? This is my least favorite part. Here we go, hard, hard, hard. And step five, drag it up your legs and drag down your legs. And that's a perfect starting strength deadlift. We're gonna do one more rep because I wanna point something out from the side, okay. right? So let's do it again, step one, right. stance. Step two, grip. Step three, shins. Got it. Step four, chest. All right, now I want you to see how far his hips are from the barbell. We've got a nice big width here. One of the things we're trying to do when we make a lift more efficient, especially in a deadlift, is we're trying to bring the hips closer to the barbell, or what we call the gravity vector, right? It's the bar path. The bar is just gonna move in a straight line up and down over the, the balance point, which is your midfoot. Right. So the bar is gonna go straight up. If it's really heavy, any deviation of straight up is gonna be inefficient. So, and that doesn't matter whether it's a, a traditional starting strength deadlift or a competitive deadlift, heavy deadlifts must be pulled straight. Now, the further your hips are away from that barbell in the side plane, in that sagittal plane, the more moment force you have to overcome in your hips and back. Okay. So if I can figure out a way to reduce that, then I can make progress, except I can't reduce it by letting your knees slide forward. Well, that creates a problem because your femur is a fixed length. Now we've got this sort of mathematical physics problem. How do I keep my feet inside my hands and somehow bring my hips closer to the bar without letting my knees go forward? Well, here's how we're gonna do it. All right, so now we're gonna show the changes we made to move you from a general strength deadlift to a competitive deadlift. And the first thing that you'll notice is that you're not wearing shoes. So you've got deadlift slippers on. Why would we take your shoes off? Well, because it's going to shorten the range of motion a little bit. Shoes have three quarters of an inch heel. Most that's what it is for most shoes. So if I can reduce the range of motion three quarters of an inch, then that's a little less work than you yeah, have to do. Taking. That's right, so work is that distance piece matters, right? So it's that force times distance. So shoes are off, you're gonna approach the bar, but this time you're gonna take a much closer stance. And you're gonna go down and grab the bar, the steps are the same. Knees, shins forward, and knees out. Now you'll notice you look very bow-legged here. So what I've done is I've taken some of that angle from the side and moved it to the frontal plane. So without the knees having to go forward, the hips got closer to the barbell, right? Hips are still high. You're gonna squeeze your chest up by arching your low back, but rounding your upper back, and now drag up the legs. Just like that. That's a much more efficient deadlift. Back down, let's do it again. Nice close stance. Knees out, bow-legged, pull. Beautiful, just like that. Now, does it feel like you're gonna tip over sideways. No. Why? I don't know. Because <laughs> the weight's going to counterbalance you, right. right? Nobody ever feels like they're going to fall sideways when they lift. They feel like they're going to fall forward or backwards. They never feel like they're going to tip right or left. And so we do it this way and it, and it buys us. What it's doing is it's taking those moment arms off of the side plane and it's putting it on the frontal plane. And when we do that, it brings the hips closer to the barbell, reduces the total moment that's applied to the body in the barbell movement exercise from the side. So the moment from the side reduces, the moment from the front increases, but it's easier to overcome that moment when it's on the frontal plane than when it's on the side. So we've still artificially shortened your legs, but we've done so by keeping your legs inside your hands so we're within the rules of conventional deadlift. Now, another concept that I taught you about a year ago was how to pull the flex out of the bar and make the weight heavy in your hands before it broke off the ground. And so let's show that. So you'll do your same deadlift setup. That's step two, step three, chest up. Make the weight heavy in your hands now. The flex comes out and go, and it pops off the ground. Now, this is important because if the bar isn't flexed, or if the weight isn't heavy in our hands, then as you start to pull, some of your energy will 
make the bar heavy in your hands, flex the bar, it'll move an inch or two and jerk you forward. So we wanna pull all that out and get in a better position by the time the weight breaks off of the floor. The other thing it allows us to do when we get this sort of bow-legged look, and obviously it's not actually bow-legged, is it allows us to use the adductors or the inside of the thighs to be hip extenders. So I'm still able to better use more muscle mass this way just to move the barbell over a shorter range of motion. Another reason we love that close stance with knees out. So now we're gonna show from the side view the new deadlift setup with the closer stance, knees out, rounded upper back, but still an extended lower back. You're, we're gonna hear about this from people, right? Like you're gonna, yeah, yeah. You're gonna destroy your back. Like you're, okay, well, the problem is, is that the, the real danger zone is kind of L4, L5, and L5, S1. And watch your lower back, it's gonna be in perfect extension. The upper back, the thoracic back, can actually be rounded a little bit and it's fine. And remember, you're strong. So I wouldn't have my mom or your mom or our dads or our coworkers or somebody that's never done this before do a deadlift like this and round their upper back when their back is not strong yet, but your back is already strong. Therefore, it's more resilient to injury. It's not going to get injured rounding your upper back and we're still gonna be very careful with your lumbar spine to make sure it's set in good, hard extension. So let's take your stance. Grip, shins, knees out hard, chest up, but back, upper back rounded. Now you'll notice, now his hips are much closer to the barbell than it was, that gravity vector. And pull, very nice. Let's do another one. Let you be a little more efficient here. I'll get out of your way. Very nice, and down. Good, so we can see what we've done is we've brought your hips closer to the barbell and we've done that by spreading the knees. So the knees don't have to go forward. As the hips come forward, the knees go out. And we're able to do that with the close stance. And of course, then we cut down on the range of motion with taking the shoes off and rounding the upper back. The combination of all those things has allowed us to be more efficient in the deadlift. And oh, by the way, you've gotten stronger, right? Like you can't just do these things. These aren't just tricks that you can add 200 pounds to your deadlift. If done correctly, it might add 15, 20, 25 pounds to your deadlift, but it wasn't easy in the beginning, right? We had to really work at it. And so th those are the changes we make. All right, so Matt, we now know why my feet are so close together. Right. So anytime, next time I post a video on Instagram of you deadlifting, you guys know the answer. But here's the question, Matt, if people who are watching this, just regular lifters trying to get strong, should they bring their feet close in together, round the back, do all that stuff? That's a great question. Generally, the answer is no, right? We want to follow the model that starting strength sets up as greatest effective range of motion for the list because we're trying to get generally strong. So get generally strong first, following a basic starting strength deadlift progression. And then once you're generally strong, if you decide to become competitive, you decide to actually try to compete in powerlifting or strength lifting, then you can start to apply some of these changes in order to be competitive. But another point to make too is that this isn't new. A lot of people think this is like, oh, this is some kind of crazy thing that Matt Reynolds came up with. Sure. It's not. Yeah, so um, trade secret, nothing new is ever gonna get invented at this <laughs> point, right? So in, fi in the fitness world, it's just not, we're just repackaging old things. I'm a, I'm a student of powerlifting history. I've watched guys over the years like Vince Anello or uh, with a close stance or, or Konstantin Konstantinov who uh, pulled with a rounded upper back. And so we studied their form and looked at how efficient their lifts were. And we try to apply that efficiency to you. And it's a little different because your body type isn't the same as their body type. And so anthropometry or the way you're built makes a difference. But um, yeah, I didn't invent any of this. I just studied it and figured it out and said, okay, this, is, this will work for you. And there's other things that wouldn't work for you. Um, but this works for you really, really well. And so we've got an efficient deadlift. 600's checked off the bucket list. Yeah. 605. What's and next? 700. 700? Well, I mean, you know, we I'm gotta old. go 625 and 50. You're gonna, I've, got, I've got gray hair. Yeah, I know. 700 is coming for you. You're young enough for 700 still. Okay. So 700 deadlift, two years. Two years. I okay. think you can do 700 in two years. Okay, let's do it. Let's go for it. Yeah. Well, Matt, thanks so much for explaining why of my course. feet are so close together. <laughs> and if you are looking for more information like this that we just talked about the day, check out Matt's channel, Barbell Logic. A lot of great content there about barbell training, programming, nutrition, you name it, they've got it. Also, you can follow us both. I'm on Art of Manliness on Instagram. And you can check out Barbell Logic That's on right. Instagram as well. Thanks for having us on the channel, man. No, it was great. Thanks for, thanks for being here.